Well, this morning I want to talk about the, an attitude of gratitude. Uh, now, tomorrow is Thanksgiving Day, and today is Thanksgiving Sunday. And it's at this time of the year that we give thanks to God for his blessings and that he has bestowed upon us and given us so much. And uh, <clears throat> now, in Canada, we celebrate it's the second Monday of October, but in the States, they celebrate as the fourth Thursday of November. And uh, I believe we should be thankful to God, not just in Thanksgiving, but all year round. We should thank the Lord and praise him always. And praise should always be on our lips and our hearts and just to give him thanks. Now, I want to talk about an old story of two angels who were uh, sent to earth by the Lord. Now, one was sent to gather all the petitions. And the other one was to gather thanksgiving. Now, the one with the petitions <clears throat> not only made one trip, but had to make many trips to carry the petitions up to heaven. But the angel responsible for thanksgiving carried all the thanksgiving in one hand in one trip. So this story is to tell us that we are always asking God for things more than we are giving thanks and praise to him. And so that's the, uh, the story that says that we are always apt to petition and ask God. Sometimes we treat God like Santa Claus. <laughs> give me, give me. <clears throat> but God wants us to also praise him and to give thanks to him. So that's the story that reminds us of that. Now, Thanksgiving is related to praise, and it deserves a special attention in our worship of God. Now, the word Thanksgiving in the New Testament the original language of the New Testament actually means good grace. Every time you hear that word thanks or thanksgiving, it means good grace. So we are to give thanks for God's grace. And God's grace is unmerited favor that we can't earn, that God gives to us freely because he loves us. It's his disposition. It's God's disposition to love and to give grace. And so we are <clears throat> to thank God for his grace and for his love. So that's what it means, good grace. So thanksgiving is a proclamation of our belief in God's grace, love, and provision, and goodness to us. And that's what we thank the Lord for. And uh, it's a uh, tank is full. I like that. Thanksgiving tank is full <laughs> so we are full of thanks to god for what he has provided for us in scripture we learned that thanksgiving gives it gives to god and this is one of the best things we can offer god and thanksgiving is simply a confession of a blessing and i like this what it says in psalm 116 it says what can we offer to the lord how can i repay the lord for all his goodness to me how can i repay I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. So how can we repay the Lord for all the goodness to us? How? By giving thanks. It's the most unselfish thing that we can do is to give thanks and praise to God. When we are petitioning, we're kind of, you know, looking at ourselves and wanting God to give to us. But thanksgiving is giving to God. So it's the most selfless thing we can do is to give thanks to God. And so, <clears throat> thank offerings. Here's some thank offerings. Confess. So, Thanksgiving is to confess a spiritual blessing. How has God blessed you recently? Give him the thanks right now for that spiritual blessing. Give him thanks for a physical blessing. Like, did he provide your needs? And the food. That's why we give thanks to God when before we eat. We acknowledge that everything comes from him and he's given us the, the uh, privilege to have uh, food on our table and to have all these things that he's given and supplied to us and also confess a physical blessing. That means your health. You know, I thank God for my health. Did you know that our life is a lease from God? And we are to honor him even with our physical body, not just our heart and our soul, but also 
with our heart, with our body, and also confess external blessings, like for the church and the mission and around the world, the missions around the world, to thank God and and to pray for them, and also to give thanks for what God is doing. I thank God for what He's doing in the world. That many people are coming to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Did you know that 17,000 Brazilians were baptized two weeks ago in the Amazon River? 17,000 people baptized. Wow. If you tune into Christian Broadcast Network, they cover many stories that's happening in the world of the church and what God is doing. And they were there, the reporters. They send reporters out to all these events to record these events. Because we, in the news, we have so much bad news. Sometimes we get depressed and sad and fearful. That's not the Christian. Christians should never be fearful because perfect love casts out fear. That means the perfect love of God in our hearts and lives will cast out the fear. We don't need to fear. But we need to give thanks to God for what he's doing in the world. He said that this gospel shall be preached to the whole world and the end would come. And that's what we're seeing right now. The gospel is being proclaimed. And many students are coming to faith in Jesus Christ. Many young people, Generation Z and the Millennials, uh, <clears throat> you know, born in 1990s until 2011, these, this generation, many are coming to faith in Christ. Wow, that's what we should do is confess these blessings and thanking the Lord for what he's doing. So Jesus is our perfect example. He often gave thanks to the Father. And you trace the life of Jesus in the Gospels. He always was thanking the Father. And so Jesus, too, had a thankful heart. And we need to express our gratitude to God. And <clears throat> at times, we do not thank him enough, and we need to do that. So according to Scripture, all prayers should be filled with a spirit of thanksgiving. And, and I like what uh, <clears throat> Paul wrote in Ephesians. He says, always giving thanks to God. How often? Always giving thanks to God, the Father, for some things for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wait a minute. Giving thanks for everything? You mean everything? Let me share a story with you about Reverend Alexander White. He was a Scottish preacher of Edinburgh, and he was famous for his pulpit prayers. He always found something to thank God for, even in bad times. Even in bad times, he would give thanks to God. And one stormy morning, a member of his congregation thought to himself, the preacher will have nothing to thank God on a wretched morning like this. That's what they thought. Okay, it's a wretched morning and there was a storm. And how is Pastor Alexander White going to give thanks to God for this? So, well, folks... You know what he said? As he got to the pulpit, he said, We thank thee, O God, that it is not always like this. <laughs> okay. He thanked the Lord that it's not always like this. And you can thank the Lord too when you have pains or something or you're down and out and whatever. I thank God it's not always like this. Good days are coming. Good things are happening. I know bad things are happening too, but good things are happening. God is in control. God is moving. God is working out his purpose. And we can thank God that it's not always like this sometimes, the bad things, right? But anyway, I like his attitude, and that's the attitude we need to have. And that's what Paul said, always giving thanks for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can turn it around and thank the Lord as a blessing. Now, grateful people are always in the minority. Did you know that? Grateful people are always in the minority. Let me tell you the story of the 12 sp spies in, in Numbers 13. And uh, in the Old Testament, in Numbers chapter 13, the Lord sent 12 spies to the promised land to spy out all that he was providing for them. He didn't need their opinions. God just wanted them to see it and share with the others the goodness that he was going to bestow on them in the promised land. It was 
all his, and he was about to bless them with it. So, when the twelve returned after spying on the promised land, only two of them brought a good encouraging report. Two of them. The other ten spoke of unbelief and caused an entire generation, they caused an entire generation to miss the blessings of God, the ten. The problem with the ten spies was that they weren't thankful. They saw only the negative and they only focused on the negative. They didn't focus on the good of the promised land. If they had simply recognized how good God was being to them, they would have returned in praising God, encouraging those in the faith. Sure, there were obstacles and great challenge, but God was greater than all of that. So grateful people are always in the minority. As one of the two came, the two gave a good report and said, praise the Lord. It is a land of milk and honey. God's going to bless us. But the others, no, no. So are you one of the two? Or are you one of the ten? Now, I want to talk about three attitudes that keep us from being thankful. Now, are you ready? Okay, three attitudes to be thankful. But there are three attitudes that keep us from being thankful, and I want to talk about them. Now, the first one is a proud attitude. This attitude says, nobody ever gave me anything. I worked hard for everything I have. For years you worked hard and now it is finally paying off. With this kind of attitude, you feel that you have no one to thank but yourself. I did it all. I did it my way. That keeps us from being thankful, that proud attitude. This is the situation with the rich fool that Jesus spoke in one of his parables. And we pick up the story in Luke chapter 12. The rich fool was prospering in his wealth. And uh, listen to what he said. He said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns, build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. So he was a rich fool who was proud of what was happening in his life. But God said to him, you fool. This very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? So the rich fool not only had a problem with greed, but also he had a proud attitude. He felt that all his prosperity was due to his own abilities. He didn't acknowledge God nor gave thanks to God for the blessings that he had. Listen to this, folks. Greed and pride keep us from being thankful to God. Greed and pride keep us from being thankful to God. This is the basis of thanksgiving, to remember that you and I got here with the help of God and that he is the provider of every blessing we have. We owe everything to God, even our very lives, because our lives are a lease, a rental from God. Do you think you own your very life? Well, God brought you into existence and he can take us. So another attitude that keeps us from being thankful is a critical complaining attitude. And man, we hear a lot of that everywhere. I hear in the coffee shop people complaining all every day. There's one fellow who keeps complaining. I said, do you have any good news? <laughs> he said, well, you had a hard time trying to figure out the good news. <laughs> but we are grumblers, right? And I want to share with you a story. It's quite an interesting story. It's a, in a few areas of Mexico, they have hot springs and cold springs side by side. Did you know that? They have hot springs and cold springs side by side. And no one understands this phenomena, but it's very unique. 
Actually, in the Azores, where I'm from, we also have hot springs and cold side by side. Anyway, because of the, incon the convenience of this phenomena, the women often bring their laundry. They uh, put their clothes in the hot springs and rinse them in the cold springs. A tourist who was watching these women commented to his Mexican tour guide. He said, I imagine that they think old mother nature is pretty generous to supply such ample, clean, hot, and cold water side by side for their free use. And the guide said, no, senor, there's much grumbling about that mother nature doesn't supply the soap. Now, can you imagine having hot water and cold water free and the lady still complaining, no soap? That's human nature. That's what keeps a person from being thankful. They often complain and grumble. And did you know that the people who constantly grumble are the most ungrateful? They are never satisfied with what they have, but are always looking at what they don't have. Are you one of those people? You're always looking at what you don't have and what you would like to have. And the other man's grass is always greener. Mine isn't. Sometimes. Okay, we have a confession here. We need to pray for our sister. <laughs> no, it's, it's grumbling. It, it, it's, uh, this is at the very heart of a grumbler. They feel that life is treating them unfairly and they are always at the short end of receiving what should belong to them. They are never content with what they have already. Did you know that grumbling is a sin? You're probably thinking, wait a minute, Pastor. Grumbling is a sin? People who constantly grumble are the most ungrateful. And here it is. The Lord said to Moses, How long will the wicked community grumble against me? I have heard their complaints, the complaints of these grumbling Israelites. So it's God saying, How long will the wicked community grumble against me? God was providing for them in the desert and they still were grumbling. God was providing them water. And did you know that that water was bitter and they complained about the water being bitter? But did you know that archaeologists went to that site and they found the water? And did you know that that water has so many minerals, that's why it's bitter. And that water has a, 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 a cleansing effect. And so what archaeologists found is this, that the water they were drinking actually was really good for them. It was healthy, and it was cleansing them from all uh, the other bacteria and germs that they had accumulated in Egypt. So God was what? Restoring their health, and yet they grumbled about it. And then they grumbled about manna. And then God sent birds. Um, what did he send, Rosalind? Quails. Thank you. My mind just went empty. <laughs> quails. He sent quails and they were complaining. But they were complaining. But the manna from heaven, uh, manna actually means what is it? That's what they were saying. Manna. What is it? God was supplying them, and I could imagine that that manna had so many nutrients. It was fortifying and helping them. And did you know for 40 years, they did not hurt themselves? Their clothes did not wear out. Their sandals did not wear out. Can you imagine 40 years with the same clothing that didn't wear out? God was providing for them and, and keeping them, sustaining them, and yet they continually grumbled not being thankful. So, grumbling. I hope you don't grumble. Look at the bright side of life. The next one is a careless attitude. So the proud attitude keeps us from being thankful. A critical or complaining attitude keeps us from being thankful. And then a careless attitude. A careless attitude. And it says here, how often have you and I been blessed and that we neglect, we neglect to give thanks to God? 
We become too preoccupied with the good things in life and the blessings that we don't even thank God for it. It's like the story of Jesus who healed the 10 lepers. Remember the story? He healed 10 lepers and only one went to him to thank him. The other nine got carried away in their blessing that they neglected to thank the Lord for their healing. And sometimes that happens, neglect. We neglect. We get too carried away with all the stuff we have and the blessing, and then we just don't thank the Lord. It's neglect. Only one came back to thank the Lord, who was so thankful for the blessing of being healed from leprosy. And sometimes we don't realize how good we have it. We don't realize how good we have it. Really. I've been to places and countries, and one lady I remember, she was living in a very old house. She was alone, she didn't have any children, and she was blind, and she had a dirt floor. This was in the Azores, and my aunt, uh, Mary Jo, was going to give her meals. If it wasn't for my aunt, this lady would have died. And I saw the conditions that she was living in. And I told my aunt, aunt, doesn't she have anyone to care for her? My aunt said, no. And so I hugged my aunt and I said, thank you for what you're doing in sustaining this lady's life. And, uh, and make me thankful for what I have at home. A roof over my head, food on the table, a warm place during winter time, car to travel. We are, listen, we are so blessed here in Canada. If you go to other countries, it is extreme poverty. And how they survive, I don't know. So let us not be careless in giving thanks to the Lord. Let's not neglect that. And we need to be thankful to the Lord. I like that hymn, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Isn't that true? Will you count your blessings one by one? Count them. Every day count them. Before you go to bed, I'm going to say this to you. Before you go to sleep, Count your blessings that day, what happened, and thank the Lord for that. You'll be a better person. They did a test years ago with interns, medical interns. And they had 10 interns they were uh, uh, training, and five, they decided to do an experiment. They decided that the five, they would give them like a cup of coffee, uh, a muffin, they would give them uh, something to treat and they would be encouraging and thanking them for what they were doing. The other five, they didn't give them anything. They didn't even thank them. They kind of uh, uh, you know, were more, uh, a little bit more stringent with them. And guess what? The five who were being thanked and encouraged, they performed way much better than the other five who didn't. Encouragement and thanks goes a long way. And I've noticed that even with some employers. There's one employer I know who the girls are serving coffee behind the counter and she goes up and she hugs them and she says, I thank you for your work here and what you're doing here. She creates this wonderful environment that the, the girls that are working there, they love going there. It says, this is the best job I've ever had. I've never had a boss like this who's so grateful. Do you see how thanksgiving and gratefulness goes a long way when we show that? So we need to count our blessings, what God has done. And uh, so, thankful for blessings. Here, I'm going to talk about a few of them just quickly. Be thankful for God's presence. Psalm 75, we, th we give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your name is near. That means your presence is near. So I thank God for his presence. Are you thankful for God's presence that's near? Amen. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. He's near. 
And the other one I want to give thanks is for God's provision. In the midst of the raging sea, Paul was grateful to God for the food provided. He took some bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of all. So he gave thanks to God in the presence of all for God's provision. We need to give thanks to God for that. Also, be thankful for God's pardon. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you became obedient from the heart to that form of teaching to which you were committed. So thank God for what? His pardon and pardoning us from our sins bringing us closer to him through the teaching of his word. And then fourthly, be thankful for God's promise. For as many as may be the promises of God, in him they are yes. Wherefore, also by him is our amen to the glory of God through us. Hallelujah. So I thank God for his promises. He's a God of his word. We thank him for that. Also, Be thankful for God's purpose. We know that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. So thank God for his purpose. What's God's purpose for our church here, the church here? What is he doing? What is he working? I pray and I thank God for his purpose, that he's going to work his purpose out. Amen and amen. Finally, I want to conclude with this. Fanny Crosby, the great hymn writer. Did you know that she wrote eight, over 8,000 hymns? To God be the glory, blessed assurance, Jesus keep me near the cross, and many more, 8,000 hymns. And she was thankful to God for her blindness. Did you know that? She was thankful to God for her blindness. Although blinded at the age of six weeks, she never complained about it. Once, a preacher sympathetically remarked, I think, he said to her, I think it is a great pity that the Lord did not give you sight when he showered so many other gifts upon you. She replied quickly, Do you know that if at birth I had been able to make one petition? She said, it would have been that I should be born blind. What? And the preacher said, why? She said, because when I get to heaven, the first face that shall ever gladden my sight will be that of my Savior. What an attitude. She was giving thanks to God for her blindness. Because the first face that will gladden my sight will be that of my Savior. What a wonderful attitude. Do you have that attitude? Or are you grumbling? Are you grumbling? Grumblers are not thankful. We need to be more thankful. The Apostle Paul, he said, I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret. Look at what he says, I've learned. It took time. When he says I've learned, that means it didn't come overnight. I've learned through these years, I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I've learned to be content. You know why? Because I can do everything through him, Christ, who gives me the strength. What an attitude. Paul learned. It took a while. But he learned to be content in what? In every circumstance and to give praise. And what did Paul and Silas do as they were imprisoned, as they were shackled against the wall? The Bible says they were praising God and praising God is thanking God. Can you do that in that circumstance, not knowing if you're going to live the next day or not? But to give thanks to God. I've learned. 
He said, I have learned the secret of being content in every situation, whether fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, because I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. That's my content. That's what I've learned. It's only through Jesus. And give him all the glory. Amen. So there we have it. And Paul said in Thessalonians, be joyful Always, how often? Always, pray continually, give thanks for all circumstances, give thanks in all circumstances. In the circumstance you're in right now, give thanks to God, not just for it, but in it. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. So that's what we learn about being thankful. And, whoops. Are you counting your blessings? So, what prevents us from giving thanks is a proud attitude, a critical complaining attitude, or a careless attitude. What's your attitude? I pray that you will have a good attitude after this message, that God would speak to your heart and say, I'm going to be thankful more to God. I'm going to give him the praise. Even when things are not going my way, I know he's in control, and I know he will work out. It will work out in the end. Amen and amen. So, be filled with the Spirit. And that's what we need. As we are filled with the Spirit, the Spirit helps us to focus our attention on God and give Him the praise and the thanksgiving rather than be focused on us. So one of the highest forms of prayer is praise and thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God in the highest. Amen.